Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore the 108 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now that project is happening in the US but right now I'm back in the UK in Cornwall and at this moment I'm in Myla and I'm just walking to the water taxi to go out and visit Tetra which is the boat that I visited last time I was here and see some friends who are turning that old wooden boat into a successful business. Thanks very much for the lift. Okay. Thank you. Right, so. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So I'm here on Tetra, and you guys should remember that um, earlier in the year I visited Tetra. She was uh, being rebuilt in Cornwall, and um, she's been launched. So, and she's actually in service now as a sort of restaurant cruise boat. Um, so I've come on board, and we're going to talk to Charlotte and Jess, who have masterminded and put together this project, and um, see how they're getting on. It's great to see you guys again. Um, it's been only seven or eight months since I visited you guys when you were still in the middle of a major rebuild and now you're on the water and the business is running, is that right? Yeah, I've been running since the 2nd of August. It's so amazing yeah. what progress you've made. So we launched in um, June, yeah. the boat, but it still needed finishing and then we actually launched the business on the 2nd of August. Okay. And then almost like two days after that we did our first charter and then since yeah. then it's been it's, every, yeah. Yeah, it's been really busy which has been fantastic. Yeah. It's all word of mouth so far and like, yeah. because everything's so new we haven't really had a chance to do much marketing. Or and when people come on board, what happens? Um, so we do breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea or dinner, but we've really done many lunches and dinners. We have different routes that we do, but we um, mostly go up the Truro River and then we head over to a really lovely little spot to anchor and yeah. basically we've got this huge banquet table and we just fill it full of food which we prepare here. Right. So we both skip the bird, we both cook. One person cooks for two charters and one person gets skippers for the two charters and we swap. Okay. So it keeps it sort of varied and doing two you get in the flow of it then. Can you tell us sort of what your backgrounds are? Yeah, I think we both grew up on boats since we were kids, that's when we first met each other and then yeah. Yeah, we've both done a lot of sailing um, in lots of different ways. So I've always sort of gone with the wooden boat team and just done a lot of actual sailing. <laughs> we've both worked on boats a lot and yeah. as like cooks and deckhands and yeah, just lots of it. Yeah. It's basically been our lifestyle and our, our passion as well for so long that it's, it seems silly not to use it as a business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So combining our skills, I guess. Can you tell us a bit about what the boat was before <laughs> and how you decided to rebuild her in the way that you've done it? Um, so the boat is was built in Cornwall in Blue. Yeah. And she's the next fishing boat. She's the long line for Mackerel. And it's nice actually like having a boat that has history. I think it just interests people anyway and yeah. um, it's I think that's, that's a nice history, right? yeah, element to it. And yeah. we're like, well, she used to catch fish and now we serve fish, so it's yeah. yeah. sort of a similar thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, working boat back to work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's really you know, she's earning her keep. Yeah. We both had quite a like strong view of how we wanted the boat to look and to try and keep her looking as nice as possible but as functional as possible as well. Yeah. Like we knew we wanted a big table and a good space to have the galley. Yeah. Um, which used to be the engine room up there. Right. Um, we had a massive like, 185 horsepower Volvo which mm. took up that whole Wow. That was enormous. Yeah. 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 So we've now got a smaller engine room, which I think was in your last video. Yeah, it's quite dusty. <laughs> Continuous. You guys worked a lot on the boat yourselves, I believe. We were here every day. Uh, yeah. Every hour. <laughs> every hour. Yeah. Um, we had, so having been here for the last 12 years, we know a lot of local people and yeah. ship rides, and without, without that local knowledge, this wouldn't have happened as quickly yeah. as it did. Yeah. Um, it's a lovely community. Mm -hmm. and, it's fun, yeah. yeah. And also a really incredibly skilled community yeah. for wooden boats. Like, Farmers, Penrith, this whole area is fantastic for wooden boats and yeah. the skills that that requires to keep such a big community of wooden boats going. Yeah. So there are 
fantastic boat builders down yeah. here and people that are interested and want to innovate but also really know the old, the old ways of putting a boat together mm -hmm. and yeah it's There's a lot of passion yeah. around it isn't it absolutely like, and a lot of skill which yeah. has been great for us because we're like right, right. <laughs> we're gonna use you <laughs> yeah. every time we had like a section of even like making the decision on the roof because yeah. I mean it's a massive structure to add to a traditional boat yeah. and we were a little bit worried about ruining the lines of her yeah. or um, and we had many people coming by and asking opinions and doing yeah. drawings and you know but we could we had like this sort of I don't know wealth of knowledge we could go and yeah. call on a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite big for us. Absolutely, yeah. It's bigger than a lot of galleys you get on a lot of charter boats. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, living on boats. Yeah. So. And we're quite small ourselves. <laughs> I mean, height wise. So. Yeah. Um, and we can both like cook in here really nicely, like one of us on each side. Yeah, I enjoy cooking in this galley, yeah. which isn't. Don't always say that about galleys on boats. So, and yeah. it's got a lot sure. of light, which is loads of light. Yeah. And when people are on board, they can go anywhere, and you, you know, we want to have that same feeling through the whole boat so still using like really nice wood and like making sure it's got like the finishing touches basically that give that overall I think yeah good feeling about absolutely. a space yeah mm. what advice might you have for people in a you know similar position who are trying to start something don't think about it because <laughs> then you won't do it <laughs> it's like just 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 Even though, like you stop. do, you do to start with. You know, like we've done so many courses and we've done a business plan and we did all of that to start mm. with. And then it comes to a point, I think, where you either do it or you don't do it. And it's just making that decision. And once you do make it, you've got all the information you could possibly get. But there's, you know, so many things that are unknown and you can't look into a crystal ball and see if it's going to work. Mm. So yeah, if, if it makes sense in all the ways that you can see and um, I think yeah and then you just go for it and you just got to make it work. Doing a rebuild of a boat is very expensive and starting a business is very expensive so we've taken a loan to do it. We couldn't have done it like with our own finances. Oh god no. <laughs> um, I guess that, that adds an element of like well we've borrowed this money we've got to pay it back so yeah. um and as soon as you start employing people then it's expensive and yeah we we have skills we didn't have we don't have by all means all the skills yeah. to do anything like this so you know it's a group effort and that costs money <laughs> and a lot of beer <laughs> we've only been running six weeks um and so far the response has been really good which is yeah prom like that's a nice start quite confident that it's gonna work but yeah, yeah come back this time next year and you might see us cry <laughs> <laughs> from the start we've been on social media so on instagram and facebook um the business is blue river table so um that's where we are and then we have a website which is blue river table.co.uk So right now I'm in Gweek, which is in Cornwall, the southwest of the UK. And this is actually the place where I rebuilt my previous boat, which was a 1947 wooden Swedish folk boat. And it was only 25 foot, but I actually lived on board that boat for a few years and sailed it all over the place, ended up somehow in the Caribbean. But anyway, during that period when I was rebuilding the boat, uh, I was friends with a bloke called Steve, and he was one of the people that helped me out a lot during that time. And we did some sailing work together and some other work together. And uh, so I've come back to catch up with him and see how it's going and I think he's got a new project going on which might be quite interesting. Hello Steve. Hey. <laughs> hey dude. It's good to see you buddy. Good to see you. How are you? Yeah, great. Cool. Yeah, so this is Annie and um, Annie was built 110 years ago uh, in Denmark to, to fish the North Sea and the Arctic. So yeah. she's ridiculously overbuilt. So I ended up with a 47 foot boat that weighs nearly 60 tons right and um, we thought what better to do with an old fishing boat than go fishing again but this time not for fish for plastic uh -huh. so we've since we've been living here about 12 years me and the kids have been using the little rowing boats and the canoes and stuff to go down the river and just and just clean up whenever we get the chance yeah but we really want to do it on a bigger scale and go further afield and go to places like the Sillies and the Outer Hebrides that are absolutely horrendously covered in plastic marine waste yeah. and it's really causing a massive problem globally so we want to just do our little bit 
because Annie can sleep ten people, and and, yeah. and she's such an easy-going old sailing boat. So all the booms are above head high. You can yeah. have kids doing circuits on the boat on tricycles and stuff, and yeah. she's so heavy and stable and safe. You want to use this old boat as as a sort of tool to inform people and educate people about the problem of the marine plastic waste yeah. and also use her as our recycling centre. So we're building a chipper out of a BMX and um, an old cider press and modifying it to make it into a compactor for when we okay. find barrels and bottles we can, so we can condense them into into smaller space so we can carry a few tons at a time awesome and um and and yeah basically have a really good time show people about sailing and get them interested in thinking about about especially single use plastic yeah so hopefully when they go shopping at the supermarket they'll think twice about buying their bananas in a plastic bag because yeah they don't need to be in a plastic bag if we can get kids young kids that, that are just starting school and stuff now if we can get them to think about the problem that the all this plastic waste is causing, yeah. then there is a real chance that we could turn this around before it's too late. We, we've got to try. The bottom line is we've got to try, because if we don't yeah. try, we haven't even tried. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, so is it actually that bad? I mean, people at home might be thinking, okay, fair enough, that's a good thing to be doing, but is there any urgency about this? Well, we've been cleaning up the river here, the Helford River, for yeah. 10 or 12 years, and just just me and my kids and a few friends and every now and then we half fill a canoe with bits bits of rubbish but um, it was really since um, me and my mate Adam took a, a, a 16 foot open Canadian canoe and a bit of a storm blew us across to an uninhabited island. The south and the west side of the island yeah. were four to six feet deep in all sorts of flops and rejection. Car tyres, loads of fishing nets, loads oh, of fishing God. line, dead and or dying dolphins and seals just yeah. tangled up. It was just absolutely, absolutely horrendous. Yeah. And it just, it made me think, blimey, you know, what I'm doing back home with the canoe is so small fry. We need to get out there and tidy these places up. And animals are getting tangled up in it every day. Yeah. And apart from that, I mean, just selfishly thinking as a human being, I want to eat fish and I don't want to eat fish with plastic in their guts. Yes. And the shellfish, they did a survey last year all the mussels in the country that they found, 100% of the ones they looked in the guts of had microplastics in the guts of the mussels. Wow. So we're eating them. It's yeah. getting into our food chain. No, I've noticed it. You know, you're in the middle of the Atlantic and you haven't seen a ship for five days and you're still seeing plastic bottles floating by. I mean, that's, that's a pretty horrible and worrying thing. Yeah. Hey, silly puppies. Okay, Bozo, let's go to the beach. Come on, Bozo. <laughs> so we're just in the shed down the road from um, where Steve's boat, the Annette, is. And um, there's something here that might be relevant to Tally Ho. Um, I haven't made any definite decisions about the engine that I'm going to have in Tally Ho. I am going to put an engine in. Uh, she had one originally. But I haven't decided exactly what route I'm going down, but one definite possibility is um, something very similar to this. And Steve's got quite an interesting plan. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. why don't you tell us what you're thinking? Yeah, so I, I believe that possibly a suitable engine for the Tally Ho would be the Perkins 4236. I've been working on these for 20 years and they're heavy, they're noisy and they're not very much horsepower for the weight but they are extremely low maintenance they're so reliable they'll just go on and on forever they're really simple and i think i think for leo's boat this this could work so i want to rebuild an engine like this here um, and bring it fully fully finished by volkswagen camper van and old boat across either we put the van on the boat and sail across and then leave the boat in Nova Scotia or somewhere and do a road trip over to, over to where you are. Or, if I can get someone to come and help me, we'll sail through the Northwest Passage and bring the boat right up to Sequim. Swim. 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 Swim? <laughs> Squim. Squim. It's yeah. Sequim. Yeah, no, that's, it's spelled Sequim, but it's, you uh, pronounce it Squim. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty amazing plan, dude. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does seem like a, 
you, you say it's got a, a huge amount of torque these engines for their yeah. horsepower yeah and uh well, i've been considering lots of different options it it might be uh the way to go but we'll we'll have to see and have a, a think about it but either way i i really appreciate no it just you want to do it yeah it would be great to be a part of it i mean yeah. leo's helped me so many times in the past with other stuff teaching me how to change planks and so the energy and the motivation that leo's brought to my project has just been oh, invaluable really you can't put it into words this is something i can do i, I do engines that's what i yeah. do and i'd really love to i'd want the adventure of getting it there as well but i want yeah. to i want to rebuild it for him in my own time and do it really really well and and then i want to take it out there and help leo install it That'd be amazing. Yeah. This is a customer of mine. Yeah. Um, this one's here for a rebuild. Yeah. But this this was installed when the boat was built in 1962. Yeah. And it's had the injectors overhaul 10 years ago, and it's had regular service. Yeah. But it's never needed anything, and it's wow. it's always started first time every time. Wow. And it's been in regular use for over 50 years. It's pretty good. Yeah. They're cool. good old things. Yeah. Yeah, so this is um, my old friend Cecil the Combi. Um, I bought him out in Canberra in Australia in 97. And we had an awesome adventure driving around Oz and up through the middle and getting stuck in the deserts and all sorts of good fun. Um, so he's been, over the years, he's been fairly heavily modified from what he used to be. He's now got a um, French diesel engine, suspension's lifted, the transmission's different for locking differential. Um, one of the most useful tools he's got is this big old winch on the front here. So when we find, um, for example, a few weeks ago we found a huge fishing net stuck under some boulders at the back of the beach. And um, it took all day and a few people helped us, but eventually, after snapping the winch cable about four times, we managed to get all of the netting out and it weighed nearly half a ton in the end. So the, the potential the pollution that that one net could do you know once that's broken up into tiny little micro particles and all the creatures in the sea have eaten it you know just that one net has potentially stopped millions of creatures from getting harmed by it so yeah the combi he's my everyday car as well i don't have another vehicle mm. so um he runs on chip fat oil whenever we can find it all together now in his 47 years he's done 1.3 million kilometers so how many miles is that that's just over 850,000. this year we've picked up nearly two tons okay which doesn't sound very much but when you actually see that in yeah. its sort of bulk it's it's more than half a football field quite deep right. in rubbish so it's actually quite a lot of stuff it doesn't weigh much a lot of this stuff no. i guess um but globally speaking you know there's something like eight million tons of plastic every year goes in the sea so yeah. the two tons we've picked up this year is so so infinitesimally small yeah you know it's almost like people say why are you bothering because it's like hardly any point yeah but it's it's more about spreading the word and yeah. it's more about getting people to think about what they buy and when because when you buy something you're buying it for its whole lifetime so whatever it is am i going to throw it away when, yeah. I, when it's when I finish with it, because there is what does throw it away mean? You know, there is no throw it away. What do yeah, you mean? it doesn't just disappear. Yeah, is, you're talking about landfill or incineration, or, or yeah. you chuck it in the sea. What do you mean? You know, yeah. you, so I really want to get people thinking about the full circle. So if you buy a, a, a you know some apples and they're in a plastic pack, yeah. and you throw that plastic pack away, you're saying you should consider that you still own that plastic pack. Yeah. And, and then when exactly. it's when it's floating around in the Pacific, yeah. a few years from now, you still yeah. own it. You still own it. Yeah. 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 How can people find out what you're doing? Are you doing yeah. any social media on it? Yeah, yeah. So we're on Instagram and, and Facebook as Clean Ocean Sailing. Um, we're on Patreon and we've got a little website called, again, cleanoceansailing.org. Okay. So there's lists on there of when we're going and where we're going. So if people want to come sailing with us on the big boat next year, or in the meantime, every couple of weeks we organise a clean-up, mm -hmm. either from here in Greek down the river, or we load the canoes up on the van and we meet people around the coast because part of what we're trying to do this year is do the whole of the Cornish coast. We've done about right. a third of it already. If you physically want to turn up and actually get in the canoe and come with us, yeah. amazing. You know, otherwise you can support us online yeah. through our Patreon thing. Yeah. Right, well my camera and myself is getting pretty wet here. We've got some traditional Cornish weather. And uh, so that's it for now. 
But thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It makes a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time when we're gonna be heading back to the US and working more on Tally Ho.